Well, is this live? Thank you for everyone for joining the live stream today. I'm gonna to make it as, as interesting as possible. I wanna first do some, some questions. I do have my drawings today. I have my screen here, as you guys can see, I can actually edit straight to this, right? So say live stream, yeah, let's do live stream today. Drawings are live, and I wanna kinda of mess around with that, see if we can do anything with that. I don't know for sure if it's gonna be fun or not, but we'll see. All right, so Rick Jones asks, how long have you been lifting? I've been lifting since I was around, I wanna say 11, 12 years old. My brother, he actually got into lifting before that. He's three years older than me. When he was around 14 years old, he started to lift and, and work out and I really wanna follow his footsteps because I enjoy what he did. And I'm the little brother, so naturally, I always kind of look up to the bigger brother. So that's what I did. Do you prefer working out for strength over size? It's going to depend. It depends on my current goals. So if I have a goal that I want to get stronger for something, then I'm going to focus on that. If I want to get larger for a certain muscle group, then I'm going to focus on that. And I'll make sure I'll cater my goal to that. So if I do have a certain muscle that I want to get bigger, then I'll just try to make everything bigger. I'll start bulking and start doing more hypertrophy workouts, a program that's catered to hypertrophy, then I'll switch it to strength when I need it. And the same thing for cutting, you know, I'll start doing some maintenance instead of doing all the hypertrophy stuff. What made you want to do YouTube record gaming ask? Uh, you know what? I've, before I was even on YouTube, I was training already, and I was out in the field, and I, I, lo I love training. It's always going to be the one thing I want to do for the rest of my life is just to help people personally, actually help them in person. It's a lot better than and then just doing like questions, like even this Q&A, I think if I can work with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, that'd be way, way better. I did that first, but then I started looking on YouTube. A lot of people keep asking me about information on YouTube or in the internet in general. And all these videos are popping up about guys just staring in front of the camera and then they start talking about their goals or their random stuff, what they learned or what they heard or what worked for them. And then the problem I saw with that is that a lot of them, you know, people are kind of blindly listen to them just because, you know, they're, they're buff or they look a certain way. When a lot of the information they're giving out there is not always true. That's where kind of bro science came from, right? So a lot of bad information you can say that comes out and then people will just follow up just because this guy looks a certain way, so it must work for me. But then they kind of skip the part where it might be genetics, it might be something else. Just because it works for them doesn't work for you or you know, even steroids in some cases. I filled the gap as far as providing information in a different way for my drawings so that people can stop focusing on how I look, how the person looks, how the, the creator looks, and just focus on the information being given. And I make sure I back that up with, with research and all that stuff. That's why I did YouTube and so far so good. Luis Gonzaga, did you made some graduation or course to learn all of this or you just like to study? I graduated in kinesiology and I have a certification in personal training and I do a lot of research now. I follow all the professionals that I think knows their shh stuff and I'll make sure I try to keep myself informed. So I do have my education important to just keep working and researching. Master NK, I'm skinny and how can I eat get eat more or just eat more? Any supplement recommendations for me? I don't do recommendations for specific supplements. There are mass gain supplements out there. There's also protein shakes. Usually I wouldn't recommend those unless it is kind of last resort. You can get enough food from your eating and all that and that's great. If you're having trouble eating, first things first is try to increase your carbs just because carbs are easier to to ingest and there's there's a, you can eat a lot more than just just eating fats and proteins instead. So, if you're having trouble eating more, try to increase your carbs first and then see if that works for you. If it works for you, great. If that doesn't work for you, you can look into supplements. You can try a whey protein shake. You can try some gainers, but I wouldn't recommend staying on gainers for long because you don't need it first and foremost and it's way too much too much carbs. Something I'm I'm very concerned with when people think about mass gainers. So try to go f natural f foods first and carbs, like fruits. And then if that doesn't work, then try other carb uh sources. You know, it has to it has to be a little bit dirty, that's okay. Just make sure you tried it first and then you wanna do mass gainers, you can try it. Uh, but not the first, it shouldn't be your first go-to. Shafiq Khan, why do my triceps hurt when I work my biceps like it's very painful and I can't move my arm? 
uh, might be your form. I don't know for sure. That's that's a hard call. I want to say it might be your form, but also you have to think about the bicep curl. Even though your 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 triceps during the antagonist muscle, it still plays a role in, in in stabilization. So it's not like it's inactive the entire time you're doing bicep curls. So there might be something going on with your form, and you're putting your yourself in a situation where your triceps are trying to stabilize and it's not doing something right, and it hurts. I can't say for sure. You're gonna have to check with someone that might know their stuff locally. Kazi Kazan. You guys have some cool names, by the way. Can a beginner take protein shake and benefit from it? Of course. Uh, anyone can benefit from, from protein shakes. It doesn't have to be for beginners, intermediates, or advanced people. You can take it. Just make sure you use it appropriately. You don't just use it just because. Know what you're taking in. Know your macronutrients. Know your macro breakdowns. You can try and meet it with whey protein shake. If you don't have to, then don't do it. Uh, but it can help for beginners. Uh, Dave Hughes. Must have equipment for a home gym setup. Uh, if you can get a power rack, that's your goal too. I don't know how, wh exactly what space you have, but if you can get a power rack and a bench, you should be good for almost everything you need to do. If not, if, like, if you have smaller spaces, you can use bands, but it's going to lim be a limitation after a certain point, right? You're going to get too buff for it. Uh, you can use dumbbells, easy. Dumbbells and a bench is fine. You can use a TRX or any kind of suspension training machine. So those are your go-to. There's a lot of ways to go it, but go for it. But power racks is the best one, I would say. If you can afford it, you have the space, then go for a power rack and get that bench, that barbell, and you should be good to go. BCAA or amino acids. BCAAs are amino acids, so never forget that. You know what? If your amino acid, if you have an amino acid supplement or just a whey protein shake, really, it should contain BCAAs, and more more than likely, it's going to have enough for you. So. Unless you know you're lacking BCAAs, your branch chain amino acids like leucine, especially leucine, then you just take food, amino acid supplements if you have to, and whey protein shake if you have to. Does BCAAs work? You know what? It's it's a lot of times people think that you should isolate BCAAs. That's why that question kind of pops up a lot. You don't have to isolate BCAAs. There's not a lot of benefit versus just eating protein. But if you do know you're lacking leucine, which is kind of hard if you're eating correctly then you can take BCAAs and it can be helpful. What do you think about Bro Science Life? Joe jo, jo Goncalo, sorry if I messed up your name. He's cool, man. You watch his stuff? Dude, he's a bro, he's the god. Okay, so Mehmet Koku. If it burns and I can't deal with it anymore and I lower weight, am I not pushing hard enough? No, if you feel like you're hurt, first of all, it depends where it burns. Are you talking about just going lighter for the same day where you go heavy and then it start burning like you're feeling that pump kind of deal? With this, then you can go lighter. You can do pyramid sets if you have to. Uh, whatever, whichever way you decide to push yourself a little bit further than your basic volume and reps and sets, that's up to you. At the end, it's going to help. But just because you have to go lower, weight doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Is cutting as a teen bad? Jeremy, Jerry Vander Linden. This one is a tricky one. I don't know the exact answer. I don't work with, with uh, teenagers. I don't work with, you know, I don't work with young adults. I just work with just adults. 18 and over, preferably older than that. Uh, I don't know for sure. If I were just to think about how everything else works in your body, then I would say you shouldn't cut just so you don't cut yourself short, literally, when you're trying to grow. So, unless you're like, you, you know, you, you're a little bit heavier for a teenager, you can consider it. But if anything, you're just probably better exercising and doing some cardio work rather than focusing on, on eating less. The last thing you want to do is really eat less at that point. Are BCAAs necessary for before fasted cardio? It's better than just fasting, I'll tell you that. Is, is it necessary? Not really. It's not going to provide energy for you. It's just going to be amino acids. Your body can break it down for energy. Highly doubt it, it will, just because protein is very hard to metabolize into energy. So you can take it. Uh, I know some people, you know, some professionals too, they take BCAAs right beforehand, either to meet a window. Uh, there's no there's no studies that for sure say there is a window. There's kind of a trend towards it, so you might benefit from that. Johnny Soros, is it possible to lose fat and build muscle at the same time, or is it a myth? Uh, depends what you mean by same time. If you literally mean second to second, then no, you can't do that. But if you're doing daily and daily and daily, you switch it up every day, so you go on a cut and surplus, cut and surplus. It can work if you if you're really diligent about it. It's really tough. I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're a beginner, because that's a lot of work straight off the bat for a beginner. So if you're kind of uh, more of like advanced, you should kind of have a really strict regimen anyway. 
so it might already be incorporated in your, your program I don't know for sure but if you're a beginner focusing on focus on one goal first and if you are a beginner then you can lose fat and build muscle at the same time there are studies that show that's possible just because there's either there's so much more to 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 stimulate as far as your muscles muscles nothing else so you can still grow and lose weight lose fat especially at the same time so that's one thing you can look forward to all right i got a super chat wow i was not expecting that so fast i didn't talk about it yet so i appreciate that thank you so let's look at your question star remnant ask low calorie diet plus weightlifting is enough to lose weight and gain muscle i hate cardio yes it is enough if you have a low calorie we're talking about calorie deficit right and you're lifting weights at the same time this is specifically i want to say specifically for beginners if you are a beginner and you're doing low calorie you're doing a cut and you're lifting weights you can build muscle and lose weight at the same time it's definitely possible uh and i would actually do that for most beginners because it's hard to to be i want to say be motivated if you do gain muscle say you want to gain muscle but then you don't see that fat going away so it's easy to to lose motivation as a beginner so yes definitely you can and definitely i would recommend you trying that first but don't try to stick to the same program say oh i'm losing weight i'm gaining muscle at the same time this program works because chances are a year down the line it's not going to work anymore even less than that so don't stick to that program but if you're a beginner hit those newbie gains right away get like take advantage of it as much as you can because it will go away if especially if you're really consistent with your workouts yeah, take advantage of it. That's what I'm saying. Don't just let it slip away. You guys look here. This is my drawings. This is exactly how I draw all my drawings for the videos. And I'm going to delete this real quick. So what I want to do today, I don't know if you guys are know exactly how I draw my drawings. I know a lot of you guys, you guys only watch my older videos, that you guys think I still use a whiteboard. I don't use a whiteboard anymore. I use Photoshop. So a lot of you guys ask me, what do I use to draw? I use Photoshop 100% is all my drawings. So everything you see, I go for my drawings here. So this is my happy face right here. It's horrible. Now the reason why I'm talking about the drawings is just because yeah, I just want to have a little extra fun here too. All right, thank you, T Love. I appreciate it. Is five by five effective? Yes, if, especially if you're, even if you're not a beginner. If all you do is stick to five by five, and mainly you just want to get stronger and healthier five by five can be great you just got to make sure you follow the program the program is catered specifically to to progressive overload so if you follow it to the t and make sure you know you listen to, you you not only follow it but you also listen to your own body and this and fill in the the blanks in the five by five program correctly it's going to work it is effective master nk i love your voice heart thank you appreciate it I don't know how your voice sounds, but I'm pretty sure it sounds pretty good too. So I love you for loving my voice, and I'm pretty sure your voice is great. Lejane Le Alarif, sorry about your name if I said it wrong. What do you suggest for a female around 30% body fat to get fit, to do lots of cardio or to lift? Uh, I think you can ask anyone else here. I will definitely suggest you lift. The thing is, a lot of times women are fed the information that they shouldn't lift, and that's really, I wouldn't say bad advice. You can get away with just doing cardio if you do high intensity cardio. But if you do cardio, you're not going to have them, that muscular built. And you, I'm not talking about like Arnold built, just just kind of more of a shape. You know, there's there's a certain shape, you know, if girls, they want big booty or they want, you know, that skinny, skinny hip and kind of wider frame. Then you have to lift some weights. Now, it doesn't mean you have to lift heavy weights. You can do circuit training with weights. Uh, you're around 30% body fat to get fit. Uh, yeah, that's fine. 30% body fat, you're not too far from from what, where everyone wants to be anyway as far as women. So try lifting. Try to do some circuit training. Try to look up some circuit training if you can and see if you can focus on weight-based circuit training that doesn't just do 5 pounds or, or low weight training. Try to go a little bit heavier. Make it a little bit tougher for yourself. You're going to sweat. And, and if you have any areas you want to emphasize like your your booty then you can start doing more booty based exercises like hip raises or even deadlifts right or even squats of course so try that out don't get scared of lifting you can do cardio too just try to do both if you can draw a banana i think i can do that it kind of sucks this looks like a banana to you guys looks like a banana to me all right, so don't get any weird ideas about bananas, but yeah, there's the banana for you. 
Thank you for asking to draw a banana, draw big biceps. The one drawing that I have the most, oops, I have the most is this. So you want to talk about big biceps? This is my go-to for big biceps. There's big bicep for you, bro. All right, thank you, Get Fed Nutrition. Will you make a video on different types of programming, i.e. linear, concurrent, etc.? That's thank you for asking that. I haven't done a specific programming video, I don't think so, but I have been studying more and more and more on concurrent training. That's actually a way of one of my more popular programs for my my clients. And and I want to talk about that a little bit more. I try, I'll try to make a video on it. I, I I don't have the exact script going yet. I have an idea how I'm going to do it. So keep an eye out on concurrent training. For those that don't know concurrent training is the concept of building your cardio and building your strength or muscle at the same time. So cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance too and also your strength, right? Trying to combo, combo them at the same time. I'll see if I can get that out soon. I, I don't know exactly when, but it is on the list. And I'll make sure I'll, I'll visit that as soon as I can. So thank you again for the $5 Canadian awesome Get Fed Nutrition. Cool, thank you. Jose Cerda, do a video on hit cardio. I did, it's an old one. Uh, this is one, one thing I wanna ask you guys too. I'm gonna pause for a second and see what you guys think about me remaking older videos I do have a hit video I think it was the third or fourth or maybe even earlier in that fourth video I made and it kind of sucks I mean it's it's not kind of it sucks and I do want to make better a uh, better version of that so if you guys are interested in a new hit cardio video or hit yeah hit high intensity high intensity interval training video let me know right now so I'm gonna pause for a second I'm just gonna look at your answers so I saw a lot of yeses for the older videos, drawing, making an update video. So I think HIT is a good option for that. So I will make a note of that. I'll see if I can make a, a new one for HIT cardio. Sorry about the peach. I know it's not really a peach, whatever it is. All right, Hayden ask full body versus split routines for strength. I, I would definitely recommend a split if you can because strength does require more recovery. So if you do, if you need more recovery, you don't wanna blast yourself all at once and then come back the next day or the day after and blast yourself again. So try to do splits, give yourself ample time to recover in between for the muscle group, for one muscle group, and then train the other on the next, the next day or a day after. So try to do splits if you can. I think for you, for everyone really, that's the best, best option. If not, if you have to do full body, say you only can get two, three days of, of exercise per week, do that, but make sure you have, I wanna say at least two days, or at least one time, two days of recovery between, and then if it's only one day, the next time, then that's okay. But definitely try to split it. Bloody L, hello, I keep getting into an argument with my uncle. He keeps saying that some calories are different than others, meaning that if I ate burgers instead of pizza, running, I would burn more calories. I'm not sure where the comparison between burger instead of pizza mean. Does it mean like one is better than the other? They're both pretty carb and fat heavy. But as far as, as saying calories are different, calories are different. I wanna get that straight with a lot of you guys. Cause at the end of the day, you guys know that my my motto is that you have to make sure you get your calories right. Your your, your calories, if you want to lose weight, gain weight, whatever, whatever it is, calories are the first thing. The first thing, macros are, are also up there. First thing is calories and macros. Now, it doesn't mean that they're all the same. There are differences, especially protein. Protein, even though you know four grams of uh, one gram of protein is four calories, it will be digested and metabolized differently in your body, requiring more energy than the other macronutrients, your carbs and fats. So if you eat a lot of protein you're gonna end up, if you actually do end up storing some of that away, you're gonna end up using more energy to store that protein away, which means that if you eat all protein, you eat, you, you, you'll, you'll burn more calories. That's true. However, the number still matters. Your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure, versus your calorie intake, those matter. TDEE counts the protein differences. So thermic effect of food, that is important too. So that's part of your TDEE, if you're eating a lot of protein, your TDEE, your TEF, should naturally be higher. So they are different. Same goes for complex carbs and fats to a less degree, a smaller degree, but it's true. So if you expect to eat 2000 calories of simple carbs versus 2000 calories of protein, they will be metabolized differently and 
your weight will be different. So keep that in mind, but the number still matters. TDE versus calorie intake. Okay, Umar Muhammad, how do you balance 10K training with powerlifting? Well, that's gonna be up to you. Whichever you, you, you prioritize more, then you're gonna have to do that. Because 10K is, that's long distance pretty much. So 10K versus powerlifting, which uses different energy systems, you're asking your body to adapt to two things that are pretty much in opposite uh, ends of the spectrum. So keep that in mind. Prioritize the one you want to be better at. You want to do better at powerlifting. Yeah, like a meet or a competition coming up. Then you're gonna have to train more powerlifting. And if you wanna do a 10K, you wanna run your 10K, hit a new record, then you gotta make sure you do your 10K runs. You gotta make sure you do your long distance runs. Draw a show. What does that mean? Kai, what kind of show am I supposed to draw? Like, I, I like wrestling. I know the big show. Can I draw the big show? Can I have like an oval shape head, right? An oval shape head. He's big, because he's big show. Then he used to be called the giant, so he had this, this kind of loop. But then he actually has one hand up a lot. So let me erase this arm here. So, well, you guys know this is theme song, sorry for the bad singing. And that's his arm, his big arm, and his hands out of frame, because it's so big. And his other arm, and he's always kind of mad when he does his arm up, so his mouth is kind of like that, and he's screaming, he got ears. And back then, he kind of had hair like this. Now he's bald. So that's the big show. And So I don't know how I end up drawing wrestling characters. I love wrestling, so I'm okay with that. And I know wrestling's fake, you don't have to tell me. I love wrestling anyway. Oh man, no, he had a beard too, that's right. And he had a, a nipple sticking out, that's right, okay. That's pretty on, spot on to me. That's the big show. I don't know if that makes the stream any better, but cool. Do a portrait, no, no, no portrait. I, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. All right, Nazar, I'm 15, what is better for me? Gym or running and playing different sports? I would say playing different sports in this case because you get to play with your friends, you can play with other people, you can socialize, you can build team skills, communication skills. So if you're 15, that is more important. Live that life, dude. Don't worry about going to the gym or running or, well, you can focus on a certain physical goal, but make sure you balance everything else out too. So do the sports, I think the sports is better. You can develop a skill, which you can use down the line. And you can develop some new friends, some new relationships. That's the way to go, in my case, in my, in my opinion. Mick Queen, your drawings are really cool, bro. Thank you. I think this is Big Show. I should send it to him, tweet it to him, then he's probably gonna ignore me. Jacob Baldwin, compound exercises or isolate exercises for hypertrophy. Compounds first and then do your accessories after. It's very simple. You always want to hit your compound. It doesn't matter if, you, if you're going for hypertrophy only. You still want to do compound just because it's going to hit all those muscles at once. Why waste your time doing isolates, isolation for every single muscle group? It's just too much time. So hit your compounds and then hit the accessory exercises, which should be your isolated exercises, and you should be good to go. Ibrahim, Cam, at what point should, you start, should one start consuming protein shakes? Uh, you can start consuming it now. You need it. So it's all depending on how, what you need. It depends. It depends on what you currently need. If you truly need a protein shake because you have a lacking protein diet, then do it now. Just make sure you, you do your research on it. Don't buy the bad ones. There's a lot of bad ones out there. How long would it take for a weight loss transformation for beginners? It depends how well you're doing it. If you have a coach, you have a trainer that can help you with it, you can go pretty fast. So as long as you're staying on top of your program, your eating, your nutrition, you can lose a lot of weight. Even even think about, this is the only time I would recommend you think about low carb or keto diets because they lose a lot of weight and it makes sense because they're cutting down the simple sugars, the water retaining foods, and they're always eating at a calorie deficit. So look into that. You can expect a lot of weight loss. Thank you, Hector Adrian Alvarado Suarez. What do you think about splitting your weightlifting workout morning to afternoon if you did not finish your workout in the morning? Ultimately, it will come down to your volume and overall, overall work capacity. It might be a good thing if you have to do it that way because you are gonna allow yourself to recover. But what I would recommend is that if you have to split it, make sure you hit all the same muscle groups in one exercise and then go for a different one in a different in your, your second workout. So that way, you can maximize your, your total stimulus, stimulus at that time for that one muscle group or whichever muscle groups you target, and then come back and make sure you hit the, the others. So that's my, 
my uh, response to that. Draw Connor McGregor. I can try. Let's see if I can try. Let's do it. Connor. Any GSP fans? I, I used to be a GSP fan. I'm still kind of a GSP fan. It's just I didn't like how you did the whole union thing. That was kind of ridiculous. I mean, my Connor looks ridiculous. It is going to look ridiculous, and that's okay. He's not that buff, I don't think. So, glove for Connor. Dang, he's bigger than, than he's ever been now. Uh, good for him. And then he has that orange beard ish. All right. Oh, I don't know how his tattoos look. I know he has a lot of tattoos, so I'm going to. I'm gonna skip the tattoos, man. Sorry if I piss off anyone because it's really badly done. But this is my Connor. Nothing you gonna do about it. That I don't care face, right? Cause he just he just kinda took everyone out. It's like, yeah, I don't care. He's like, yeah, this is easy. Who's my next challenger? Alright, so we got Connor here. He just fought Jose Aldo again, and then nothing happened. He just won easily. And Jose's kinda lying down. He's busy looking at people trying to make a movie for himself didn't go too well by the way that's connor i believe connor mcgregor all right you would look worse than the big show best effing connor ever i know thank you i appreciate the the, the truthfulness of your comments uh, ryan asks, how can i motivate myself to run uh, there's a lot of ways to motivate yourself usually my my go-to especially for my clients is just to remind themselves why they're doing it in the first place I'm not just talking about, oh, you want to look buff or you want to look a certain way. You have to remind yourself, like, why are you trying to look a certain way? Are you trying to look a certain way for yourself? Are you trying to feel better for yourself? Is it a confidence issue? You want to feel more confident in yourself? Why do you want to feel more confident? You want to feel more confident so you can can attract that girl you've been asking or looking at and you've always been thinking about? Like, if you really want, it's okay. Then you can even ask yourself, why are you trying to attract that girl? What's so important about this girl? It's like, oh, you think she's the, the one for you, that she she's like the love of your life or that you're, you're a teenager and your hormones are kicking in crazy? Think about that. Think about those those real reasons why you're doing what you're doing. And then that should be motivating enough for you. If it's not, then you you don't want it as bad as you think you do. YT Jask ask, been lifting for two weeks now with no cardio and at about a 100 to 200 calorie deficit. However, I've gained about a pound. That's the easy one. 100 and 200 calorie deficit. You got to think about that. Are you sure you're in a 100 and 200 calorie deficit? That 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 window of, of deficit is so small. It's so easy for you to either miscalculate, not because of your own undoing, not because you messed up. Is either because the estimates on the food you're eating isn't exactly what you're saying. So you're looking at such a small window, 100 and 200 calories. It's easy to, to eat that and not notice that you did. So in your case if you're not if you gained a pound then there's only one answer for you you got to increase that deficit or you got to work out more do cardio if you really have to lose weight then you have to do your cardio do your high intensity cardio if you have to more than likely it's because your de deficit is so so small that chances are you are overeating that that deficit so vincent nguyen which foods help you lose weight when you sleep uh, if you have to if i had to choose one that's gonna help you lose weight and honestly i don't think anything was is gonna help you more than just not eating at all um anything heavy protein so if you, if you eat a little bit heavier protein it is gonna take time to metabolize it's not gonna help you lose weight if you eat too much but it's better than eating something like a, a carb heavy or, or even fatty uh food right before you go to sleep so that's my answer i wouldn't say best best chance is not best thing is to not eat anything a l a b t k best way to lose love handles you just gotta lose you just gotta lose weight you gotta burn that fat burn that fat lose weight cut your body fat down body fat percentage down then you can lose those love handles like everyone always tells you i'm not sure if you heard it before but uh you can't spot reduce and it's true it's always going to be true there's no way around it you have to lose fat overall keelan forrester how can i run faster have more stamina think about the the training specificity so when you hear someone tell you training specificity, it means that if you want to improve something, you're going to have to keep doing that. So you want to run faster? Keep pushing yourself to go faster. Run faster. Run as fast as you can. You want more stamina? Run as fast as you can as many times as you can. What's the other one? SAID. So S-A-I-D. Specific adaptations to impose demands. You demand your body to run faster by running a lot faster as fast as you can, as much as you can. You build that speed hopefully and you built that stamina if not if you do struggle you can do strength workouts you can do lifts to improve that type type of a uh, movement so you think about running movement you have to think about the gait running gates you have a hip extension hip flexion you have ground reaction force you have to think about your heels you have to think about your toes it's all this stuff so pretty much a lot of leg work and then making sure you run fast too 
How many exercises should you play for each muscle to get big? Uh, a lot of times people say you should do two, two workouts per muscle group when you're training for that day. And I, I agree with that just because it's going to hit that volume, that kind of that volume sweet spot of hitting either you're doing say 12 reps and three sets, that, uh, that uh, six sets. Or, or more even six sets and and 12 reps each that's good that's like 72 reps for one muscle group and you know assuming that you're using the pro proper amounts of weights that's pretty good so try that out mook you're a personal trainer how much do you charge uh i am a personal trainer stranger personal trainer uh, as far as how much I charge, it will depend on the package that people buy so sometimes i can charge like a lot right if they only want like two or three sessions, I'm gonna just charge them on a spot for kind of like anything you buy, right? You buy something in, in bulk or buy a subscription fee. A lot of times they will offer a cheaper, like cheaper per month or cheaper per per uh, session, whatever it is. So same concept here. So I can charge pretty high. I'm not gonna disclose exactly how much. It is different, and it does depend where you live. If the demand is high enough, you can charge pretty high. I live in SoCal, Southern California. The de the demand is pretty high. What is better, Arnold or shoulder press? Be trained. I like Arnold press, but shoulder presses, it will depend on how you do it, on how you're doing it, does it? So a lot of times, shoulder presses, people push vertically, straight up, and that might not be the best way as far as creating tension for your, your shoulders. Uh, Arnold press kind of takes care of that because it has that twist and it does force you to go a little bit wider with your 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 grip so what that does is you want to think about the moment arm so think about the weight how far it is from your actual shoulder the farther it is the more tension it re requires the more strength and force production it requires to move the weight so Arnold press might have a benefit there uh, but if you do shoulder presses I would recommend that you guys try doing Y shoulder presses which which is basically you're holding a shoulder is just like a shoulder press but instead of pushing straight up try to shoot a little bit out to the sides kind of like a Y, maybe less than a Y, a little bit less than a Y. It's going to be a lot harder, a lot better for your shoulders. Can you make a video about IBS and what type of foods trigger it? I can. I have a friend that can help me with that. I, I, I don't know for sure myself, but I'll ask him. He's the one that's actually been helping me make the health videos. He's uh, he's in the field, in the health field, health field. and I'll ask him about the, the IBS. I know pff, that, that hurts. You don't want IBS. So I will ask him if he can make a video on IBS. Don't expect it right away, but I'll see what I can do. Philip Forsberg, is your beginner gains affected by previous training on other body parts? I've been training legs for one year because of injury. Can I still get beginner gains for other parts? Yes, it's not. It's not. It's not like a a, a, a tank where or like a yeah like a gas tank where they all kind of feed off of. It will depend on your muscle groups. So, yes. How long can I skip legs? Oh man, this one. I want to say at least 8 to 25 years, minimum 8 years, so good luck with that. Tila, thank you again. I think you hit me three times now. Thank you. You're awesome. Fat burners, what are your thoughts? Fat burners are, I want to say, I don't know the exact percentages, but most of them are ergogenic aids. They usually have caffeine. This, this is my thought about fat burners. You don't need it. If you use, you do everything right, you can go as as natural as you can. You can eat all the right foods and just make sure you don't eat too much. And make sure you work out. So fat burners are just like everything else. You don't you, you you could try it. It might work as far as giving you the right amount of caffeine. There are other er ergogenic uh, supplements in there, but it's not necessary. What workout do you recommend for abs? Weighted planks, weighted planks or transverse uh, plank exercises type exercises the paloff press if you guys never heard of it is p-a-l-o-f-f -F, i want to say paloff press look those up uh do any type of transverse weighted cable exercises or do weighted planks if not you can do weighted ab crunches too but i would recommend planks michael guitar will weight training stunt a teenager's growth no. If you do it right and don't get hurt, you don't do anything crazy, you should be fine. All right, deadlift in back day or leg days? That's a good question. That's the tough one. My take on it is, is I would do it on a separate day. So if deadlift, it depends how you prioritize it too. Sometimes I would do deadlift first thing in, first thing in the exercise. I do my deadlifts, go as heavy as I can, do whatever I have to do. And then I'll probably pair that with a back day instead of a leg day just because there are a lot of 
uh, shared muscle groups as far as squats. It doesn't mean you can't, you just have to understand, unless you built the conditioning for it, you have to understand that the squats will suffer, or the second exercise, so whichever second exercise will suffer from whichever you did the first time, the first one. So do back day. For me, I would do back day, but I would go pretty light on the back day because my, on my deadlift days, I would try to go pretty heavy and I get, I get taxed pretty fast. My conditioning sucks. Gabriel Brady, how can I overcome a plateau? You can try deloading. I just had a video out about on deloading, so give that a look. See if it can help you. I'm wondering what happens if you doing the same muscle group two days later. Oh, okay, so same two days later under soreness. You can work out through your soreness. So if you're sore even two days later, it should be fine. You might feel like you can't do as much just because maybe the pain's kicking you down. So it is fine, but if it is consistently always sore two days later, Either you gotta work on your program because it's not working right, or that you just gotta wait it out. Sometimes the soreness takes a little bit longer to adapt, but you will, that soreness should be gone, should dissipate after two days if you're training consistently. So keep training, what I'm trying to say. So thank you, Connor. You're awesome, but you're gone. Hey, I think it would be helpful for a lot of people if you could make a video about body types and shapes and how to work out and dieting with them. It will. But I do have some conflicting evidence or conflicting opinions about that. So that's why I've been a little bit hesitant on making a video. And what I'm talking about is mesomorphs. So I'm going to keep researching. I never, as far as my clients, I've never trained someone specifically because of their mesomorph. Um, but I will try to do more work on that so I don't give like a, a bad answer. But I'm starting to think there's, there's, there's something sketchy about mesomorphs. So... I'll get back to, on, to you on that. I'll see if I can make a video anytime soon. Maybe this sometime just down down a year. Jasper Salisbury. I'm a newbie and I've been working out for two months now and I still haven't seen any results. Do you have any tips? Uh, you're going to have to look at your program. I, I, I want to say that if any program that doesn't see any results in two months, there's something really wrong about that program. You have to reevaluate your program boxing berry is it even possible to pick up a girl in the gym based on the fact that you have a common interest uh this one's a scary one because it's like i want to say 99 times of a, out of 100 if you try to pick up a girl at a gym you're gonna look like a creep dude and you can try if you really are hell-bent about this girl don't don't seem like you're freaking stalker mode though if you're really hell-bent you can try you can go very subtle very you know, be be the bro that you can be and give it a shot. If it doesn't work, then you know, don't do whatever you did the first time. Does, stop, does stopping training after you were taking supplements affect badly and misses your body? Let me read that one more time. Stopping training after you were taking supplements. So you took your supplements and you stopped training. Well, it depends on your supplements. Now, I want to say most supplements out there are ineffective anyway. Like a lot of those, those are very specific supplements. Most likely they're just amino acids, so it won't affect you. Uh, but there are others that are more performance based. Uh, it can affect you. Chances are if you stop working out, you should stop taking the supplements that you took to improve your gains in the first place. Just go natural. I'm 18 and not allowed whey, whey protein. Is whey even important? By the way, I watched your video about it, but I didn't. it didn't answer my question. Is whey important for gains? No, it is not important to have whey. If you can get the right amount of protein, either from just regular natural protein sources, you don't need whey whatsoever. Now, whey can help just because it does contain a very high biological value as far as your your digestion of that protein, but it's not necessary. If you try to hit your protein numbers with something else, as long as you're working out, get that protein, you should be fine. Jan Brooks. My dad has hypertension. He is wondering whether he should lift and how often. I will first and foremost recommend he go for a light cardio first. See if that cardio, a consistent cardio, over time can help him drop his blood pressure first. If it can help him drop his blood pressure to a more normal range, then he can start lifting. He can start doing just, just as much as normal things. But get that clearance first. Don't, no, don't just go out there and start lifting. Get the clearance from your doctor or his doctor and make sure he, see, he's, he gets the clearance to, to actually do anything that's a little bit more intense than your basic cardio. Uh, how to make gains. Watch all my videos, you'll make all the gains you can. How could teens grow taller? Well, look at your parents and then cross your fingers. How, how often should I work out? I've been going to the gym for about two months. 
as far as how many times you go to the gym, you can check out my video on how many times you should go to the gym. But if you're a beginner and you've been see you've been going to the gym for two months, you can go as often as you feel like, as often as your your program permits. So if you have a, a a split program, you can go every day if you have to. You can, and on certain certain days, maybe one or two days, you can do cardio if you have to. Uh, so it will depend. It depends. It will depend on your program. And since you're a beginner, you have the luxury to kind of mess with that and not deal with too much of a of a negative effect. Which is better for bulking and muscle gains, calisthenics and body weight or weight training? You're trying to draw me into a bad question or like a dangerous, controversial question, aren't you? But it will depend where you are now. If you if you want to really bulk and build muscle, I would say try to weight train just because it's a lot more of a linear uh, progression. It's easy to follow. I want to say that. So if you want to keep building muscle, you gotta keep lifting, progressively overload, and you know it's very easy to to, to achieve that with weight training. Uh, either you can do more reps and sets, or you can do more weights. So you just gotta change that simple those simple numbers, and you get that progressive overload. Just make sure you you do you do enough. Don't just stop like half reps and all that. Calisthenics can do the same thing. So if you're doing like something in push-up, if you're having a lot of trouble, you're doing like five push-ups max, you have a lot of room for progressive overload in that case. Five push-ups today, three sets of five push-ups today, uh, four sets of five push-ups the next day, or, or or three sets of six push-ups the next day, or or even more specific, one set of five, or one, one set of six, one set of six, and then last set of five. So. You can do that if calisthenics permits it. Now, that's not to say that you'll never gain from calisthenics based on your fitness level. It's just that you gotta know which one will work for you. But that takes some kind of specific guessing and specific testing. While weight training, you can just put the weights on and keep going. How to know if you have a slow metabolism? Uh, if you're currently in a program where is a deficit and then you see yourself hitting a plateau as far as your weight loss, then you know your metabolism is slowing too much, especially if you're sticking to the same program and it's like really a low deficit, then you know your metabolism is taking quite a hit, right? So I wouldn't worry about too much about figuring out where your metabolism is. I'm just, I would rather worry about making sure you don't always eat too little. You wanna mix it up sometimes, you wanna eat more so you can kick that metabolism back up, not suffer all the time, and also making sure you, you lift your weights and fight that metabolism. But don't worry about too much about your slow metabolism just make sure your program is is, is is safeguarding against the slow metabolism all right final question let's do it any considerations for people starting to work out lift for the first time in their life gym wise and are 50 plus in age uh, you do want to start very light so when I have older clients it's all about just form so it's not even about the weight at this point you want to make sure you get everything correct the form because yes, when you're older, you are going to be more prone to injuries, especially if you haven't worked out your whole life. Then you're going to have to really figure out how to do the exercises, minimizing your, your chances of injury. And then once you get that down, you, you probably will start at a weight anyway. So whatever weight you are now, if you find it difficult for you, then stick with it and, and slowly progressively, you don't even have to really progressively overload like a regular uh, program would. You want to do very small increments. So you can you can push to quite a heavy like heavy weights, but just take it slow. Work on form first. So don't even worry about too much about weight right off the bat. Go for the workouts. Go for the standard workouts. Go for machines if you have to. If you feel more comfortable with machines, uh, make sure you use the machine correctly because there is a wrong way to use machines. Uh, use the machines to practice or just wake up those muscles in the first place. And then when you feel like hey, it's time to try some some free weights, some dumbbells, some bars, then go slow. I would definitely recommend you talk to a trainer, a good one hopefully, in the area and see if they can help you out because this is, when it comes to that age, is is you have a little bit less room, a little bit of a less, a smaller gap to make mistakes. So if you have that case, you gotta make sure you play it safe and hopefully at, at that age, you, it's good that you decide to work out so keep it up and make sure you work on your form and make sure you get someone to help you if you don't know about your form and yeah just work on progressively overloading just a little bit slower pace all right how to hug use your hands arms and approach the person very very slowly make it awkward as awkward as you can all right guys no more questions <laughs> thank you anyway
Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'll catch you guys next time.